So I think what sets Warrior Poet Apparel apart is the links we've gone to, just getting into the science and the design. The torture testing, the hours of marketing, mm -hmm. the, uh, the science. Yeah, we've even done some real weird stuff. Like, remember the shaman? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, the shaman. He was full of crap. Oh yeah, big time. That didn't work. <laughs> Say hello, Frank. Hey guys, welcome to La Sociedad Guerrera Poeta. All right, hey folks, joined by Mrs. Poet, going to have a conversation on raising boys. Here's something to get us uh, started. Uh, we were at a party not too long ago, and there was a mom who saw her kids wrestling. And she said to the kids, no, we don't wrestle. And so I don't think it was as much about like they were at a party and it was inappropriate to wrestle. It was kind of more of an affirmative, we in this house, we don't wrestle. And it kind of struck me and Mrs. Poet just kind of like, oh, the horror, that's, that's almost all we do in our house is wrestle. That's like the main thing. I mean, we eat, we do some sleeping, but mainly wrestle. We, we wrestle. And so we got little boys, a five-year-old and a six-year-old, and man, it's WCW whatever. But we wanted to talk about raising warriors. And so, uh, Mrs. Poet, what do you think about all that? <laughs> we wanted to talk about is it's a battle raging outside of our home for every boy in America. I do believe right now in our culture, it is different for boys than it ever has been. I do believe there is an outright attack on boydom, if that's a word, and yes, um, which will soon day, uh, soon be manhood and, and the future men of our country. And so... We just wanted to share a little bit of our passion of um, how import, important it is for boys to be boys. And even that phrase is being attacked right now yep. in a commercial um, by a big company. So what we're thinking about boys being boys is that for young children to be able to run and play and be wild... Um, Within good parameters, of course. We're not talking about absolute lawlessness. We're talking about children who can just be crazy outside for long periods of time, play with sticks, play with rocks and mud and dirt, and not be shuttled around from every activity to activity, or um, always being in an environment where they have to sit still and just um, not being in their element because it is in their nature to run and shoot Nerf guns and stab you with a sword and be a knight and be in an adventure. And um, from friends and stories I'm hearing and uh, things I'm seeing in our culture, boys are not being allowed to do that more and more. And it's just a crazy phenomenon. I actually had another conversation with a friend this week that told me, um, about hearing about children needed more outside playtime, and that's exactly right. So what may seem like a bit of news now is just common knowledge uh, a few decades ago, um, but now kids are more indoors. They're, like I said, being shuttled from activity to activity or maybe in school or whatever environment. They're having to sit still for hours a day, and they're not designed to do that. They were designed to be on adventures, um, running, jumping, playing, scooting, you know, getting bloody knees, wrestling each other, learning what you'll talk about, Peterson's um, yeah. experiment of big rat, little rat, and, and learning those social foundations for the rest of their lives that they're kind of being deprived of. So I want to get a shirt that says, Save the Boys. Because I believe the boys are, are at a real disadvantage now when um, maybe feminism may be taking off more than it ever has before. Sure. Yeah, so uh, Miss Poet alluded to Peterson. Jordan Peterson is a famous psychologist. He's really in the big uh, public arena now, so make sure you check him out. I think he's got a lot of good stuff to say, but one thing as a clinical psychologist, he 
he centers in on is just how important it is, especially the development of boys for rough and tumble play. And so this is linked to a myriad of just different crime statistics as well. One of the biggest plagues our nation has regarding, hey, uh, crimes and violent behavior is really fatherlessness is the common denominator. Guns aren't the big great evil. It, it's something that's happening here and here. And generally, if you look at it, the absent of a father to show him, hey, this is what it means to be a man. This is how you, you love your family. This is how you love God. This is how you protect and provide. Here's where you be gentle. Here's where you be strong. And yeah. it's showing all that stuff about masculinity. So uh, anyway, he's got a lot to say about that rough and tumble play. And so I've always been rough, uh, rough housing and WCW. I mean, it, it is a battle royale when the two boys attack dad. They'll never get tired of doing that. I think it's really important for them uh, to, to just be able to learn that. And it's just good quality memories with us as well. I mean, it's just I think there's something that dies in the heart of a little boy when he can't just be a little boy and to and to be able to grow up. And yeah, they play soldier because guess what? We're born into a world at war and the world will always have war. Sorry to pop the bubble of the utopian uh, uh, safety. idealist. Safety, yeah, but neutered the, safety. The world will always be at war. And I say this, I know it's inductive reasoning, but it's because the war always has been at war. Always, and it always will be. And whether it's protecting your home or protecting your nation, we need, you know, dangerous men who are kind to those who who uh, deserve it, the innocent and, you know, friends and family and ready to just crush uh, when they uh, come across enemies. So anyway, I, I think what Mrs. Poet and I really want to do, and, and we're not subject matter experts here. No, just, by no means. Yeah. yeah, we're just we're just people, but we we don't want to coddle our children lest they grow up to be a feet weak and worthless individuals crying about their feelings rather than being able to boldly stand up and contribute to society and carry the burdens of others and themselves. We want to prepare them, uh, not just protect them. We want to prepare them, and that means making them tough. And part of making them tough means, hey. They're going to have Fight Club. Fight yes. Club. Yes. Our boys have started. The older has started what he calls a Fight Club in which he coaches the younger brother on the trampoline for maybe an hour or so at a time in different tactics of wrestling. And so that's Fight Club. And you were talking about the rat experiment. The bigger okay. rat learns to let the younger rat win every so often or the little rat will no longer play. This is a study Jordan Peterson mentions. And so they learn that social construct of um, how to handle each other and how to treat each other and what the limits are. Whereas if they don't have that, then some kids don't know the limits. They don't know how to control themselves, how to behave in other settings. So it's something that's been around since the beginning of time, but it's another one of those things which recently has just been kind of deprived of more modern um, technological children who are looking at their tablets and devices or going from activity to activity and they're missing out on this very important time. So, yeah. So some of our big goals are for our kids to love God, love people, and be protectors, be leaders, and be providers. That's something that we want our young men to be one day. And we're trying to figure out, okay, what things are going to set them up for that now? What do they need now? What is their little spirit craving? What have they been designed to do that they need to do to better develop, to be those protectors, leaders, um, providers one day? So these are the things we're noticing right now as they're five and six. To that end, we have epic story time. This is real cool, guys. I really encourage you men out there to do this every single night. It's daddy reading time. And we go through the great illustrated classics. If you don't know what that is, I'll put a link below for you. Buy a bunch of those. And if you can get them at Goodwill instead of Amazon or somewhere else, you can sometimes pick them up for like a buck, two bucks, three bucks because they're really expensive. But anyway, we're going through all the classic stories, the adventures of Tom Sawyer and Treasure Island. Right now we're doing War of the Worlds. 
Uh, we just finished, what did Gosh, they love? They loved <laughs> Call of the Wild. All that stuff's oh, really, yeah. really good to grow up and adventure some heart. So other than Battle Royale wrestling matches and whatnot, they have daddy time. They specifically, when Mrs. Poet leaves the house, she's like, is it daddy time? And that's just kind of anything goes. Yeah. But uh, reading and whatnot, that, that, that's real important for us too. Yeah. Um, um, okay, you can... Uh, there I touch on uh, certain environments that our young boys are susceptible to now where they have to sit still and just behave a certain way. And I would say they're being asked to behave as girls for hours at a time, day in, day out. And then they're being put on medications for their behavior, which they were actually designed to um, be warriors, be you know, adventuresome fighters and those leaders, protectors, providers one day. But right now, it's kind of being smothered out of them. So, uh, I think let your boys be wild, be free. I think Nacho Libre said it best when he says, but sister, they are just niños trying to release their Yes, wings. they have so many wiggles. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, um, we're not talking about not behaving in situations when you need to behave. We're talking about boys being put in a lifestyle yeah. where they can never express that boyhood um, run, jump, play, conquer. You right. know, they need that. Yeah, so this morning we went to Waffle House, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they're expected to sit still, behave, and so that they can sit still. But our default isn't sitting still in a classroom environment for hours on end for them. That's not the route we're going with education with them. Now, I wanted to uh, touch on something else because you guys are will blow me up in the comments about this, and that come and that has to do with what about guns? What age will you introduce mm. your boys to guns? Right now they're five and six, and they're not really interested in real guns. They know that's what daddy does for a living. That's mm -hmm. what I, I deal in is uh, teaching firearms and tactics. But they're not really interested. They, they love their Nerf guns, and they don't they don't want to pick up, handle, and, and mess with my stuff. Now, later on, we're, I'm not missing any time. It's not like they're not going to be able to protect themselves uh, when they're 25 because I didn't start them at four. And so I don't care about having them shoot right now. Right. And when they become interested, we'll ease them in. T uh, you know, we, we've already taught them some safety stuff, but mostly it's centered around don't touch, tell an adult. And then we've got precautionary stuff so that they can't actually get to any of our firearms either. But I'm not rushing that. I don't, I don't care for that. I don't think there's going to be the risk reward in terms of familiarizing them with guns at a young age. I don't think there's a lot of reward there. To what end? I know it's cool, but there's a lot. Forts are equally cool to them. So let's just build forts until one day, years down the road, when they're really interested in firearms, we'll start to slowly introduce them at their pace. But uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, I haven't done that yet. I'm not, it's not on the radar. It's not a burning desire for me at all because we're too busy slaying each other with Nerf guns. Yeah. I, I must mention just uh, one last thing about the shirts I'm seeing and the um, motto, the slogan about the future is feminine. And I think mostly young women wear that shirt because I think if you were a mother and you had sons, that shirt would kind of unsettle you like it does me. Um, I'm hoping the future isn't feminine. I hope that it's equally masculine My boys don't and have a feminine. Future. So, you know, I'm just seeing that everywhere. I'm seeing those shirts pop up and I think something is happening in our culture where men are undervalued, unappreciated. Sure, sure, there's terrible stereotypes of men who we do not want to emulate and copy, of course. But as a whole, I think you guys are awesome. I'm cheering for you oh, men. I'm cheering for my boys. And so I hope that um, we as women can rally around what manhood should look like and rally our kids to model that from a young age. Cool. We want to hear from you guys. What are, what are some things that you're doing in your household to help uh, reinforce just the, the proper raising of uh, boys? If you've got book recommendations or some little neat thing, like I read to my boys every night, that's an important piece. And wrestle fights and stuff like that. What do you see in terms of education? What do you see amongst your peers and all that stuff? Please weigh in below because we're better together than we are apart and we're having to reinvent the wheel as we're isolated out in our own families. Yeah, so. we'll put the link to one additional book too. I don't have it to hold up because it's loaned out right now to a friend. It's the book, The Last Child in the Woods 
talking about how children play outside less than ever before and what effect it's having on kids. Very good. Also, I have a reading list, so if you want to tackle some uh, more stuff, we'll go ahead and put a link for you there as well. Guys, train hard, train smart, love your kids, and raise men, right?